Human and animal bones are very commonly dated using radiocarbon dating. However, there is something you should consider when dating bones, that is their time width. When you choose a piece of bone to date, you may receive a different age range than you expect depending on which bone you choose for analysis. The time width of any given sample reflects the total growth of that original organism and the span of time that that organism interacted with the biosphere, and hence the amount of time it was integrating 14C into its structure. For most organisms that have bones, the time of death correlates with the time when they stopped exchanging with the biosphere and therefore when they stopped taking up 14C. Hence these organisms' radiocarbon age at death is zero. However, research suggests that bones may continue to exchange carbon with their surroundings after death. This is due to the fact that bones are considered to be open systems, meaning they have the potential to exchange matter with their external environment. For bones, this means they can take up additional carbonate after death and hence additional 14C. It's not known exactly how long bones are able to continue exchanging with their environment to a level that would impact the radiocarbon date, but research suggests a few decades is possible. Now why does this matter? If you expect your bones able to represent the date of when an organism was living, if the time width extends beyond death, you may receive date ranges which go beyond the organism's death. Hence, analyzed dates can possibly be younger or older than they are in reality. To avoid this, it's best to choose bones that are in good conditions, and if possible, sample multiple sample types from the same site or horizon to get a sense of any potential age offsets.